Hello gorgeous ones and welcome to your weekly health, wealth, love and evolution cards. For all unconditional lovers, uh, for everyone, everyone that is love, because you are, you're all unconditional. We are all unconditional love, we just don't know it. Um, a lot of the time I think we forget. And uh, I hope you are well it's lovely to see you lovely to have you here thank you for being here i hope you're having a wonderful winter holiday festival whichever one of those you celebrate or don't celebrate but at least you might get a few days to be with the people that you love even if that's just you i want to give a special hug and love and kind of fist bump to those that are alone this year or feel alone and if you feel alone over Christmas Christmas can be a really difficult time for unconditional lovers because we don't necessarily fit into the mold of uh, uh of 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 the cultural norms of what relationships are, what love is, it can be challenging. And if you're feeling alone or you are alone, I want to say thank you for being brave and uh, for being you and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm here with you, you know, love is always, always with you and love connects us all. So if you can connect to that, you really can connect to all and everything. It's the pathway. So I will try not to talk too much because I don't have much voice. Um, I, If you're watching this on Sunday, the 23rd of December, which is when it's going to be uploaded, I have a postponed solstice meditation session I'm holding tonight online over Zoom at 6pm Eastern. It's 11pm London time. That's 3pm Pacific. It will be recorded for you to watch whenever you like. It's 30 to 40 minutes long and it's a peace meditation. It's a peace. I was thinking about this, you know, it, it really, really more than, than any, anything. Internal peace is what we all seek. And if we can really find peace within ourselves, that balance, that equilibrium, I think it's very apt for the solstice. But now it's become like a solstice, full moon, Christmas peace meditation so um but the reason why it was postponed is because i was too uh sick to speak my voice i had no voice so i couldn't hold it but everything is always in perfect timing i'm downloading experiencing a huge amount of new information about about peace and about how powerful it is it is for us all so if you'd like to join me on that last minute that's available today um, apologies to those that um, if, that that had booked that it, when I had to change it last minute. Thank you for your grace. So I've been shuffling these cards for ages. They still want more shuffle. I mean, I was shuffling for about six or seven minutes before I started to record, and they still want more shuffle. So it is the way it is. Cool. Okay. Health, wealth, love and evolution for this week, this Christmas week. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Let's get these out. What do we need to know? What do we need to know? I'm going to do a bottom of the deck as well. Bottom of the deck for this week is... Queen of Wands, really interesting. I was thinking about this. I have a a friend who I would uh, I introduced to this spread and this this deck actually, and um, she now works reading the tarot in a similar way to me. Um, and I just taken some actually some things had fallen out of my uh, fallen out of my. Uh, bag and this is her card her business card and it was it's interesting that she used the queen of wands and I, I just had it to hand so there must be queen of wands obviously wants to speak 
Queen of Wands is the intuitive feminine. And I think this is a really powerful message. And I was thinking about this before I recorded. For the divine feminine. It really is that the intuitive feminine. I feel as though there's many people perceiving themselves to be an intuitive feminine. But they're just aligning with ego. They're operating from a highly egoic highly narcissistic sense of spirituality and of themselves and of themselves as the intuitive feminine and not not just of the intuitive feminine but as the feminine in a very uh bullish and i de over identified way and and I, I, this is about true intuition. And I feel like if you're experiencing yourself as, as feminine and as intuitive, as I know many, many of you watching do, really, really understand that those two ideas of femininity and intuitive, and intuitiveness, intuition, are unique to you. So what does it mean to you to embody feminine energies? What does it mean to you, to, 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 to your, your intuition? It's unique to you. There isn't a feminine and a, an intuitive, you know? Even though I do use and have used the masculine and feminine spread <coughs> to work with twin flame energies um, or, or to see two sides, um, there are general as you know aspects and, and energies that are are collective 100 percent, but the collective is built up of individuals and you are of no use to the collective unless you truly get in touch with who you are as an individual and i can and i feel what happens and i and i and you know, it's just anyone can call themselves an intuitive or or a feminine intuitive and i think there are lots around and um, don't forget to purely to use your intuition truly to deduce what is valuable to you and what isn't. Like this might be valuable to you or not, but be careful not to identify. Just because it's got seventy thousand views doesn't mean that it's for you. <coughs> you know, or seventy million views. Um. Just be careful about your, your, you know, what's true for you. Breaking it down, this is a feminine energy. It's a powerful energy. It's a fiery energy. It's a passionate energy. It also represents to me the channel. I feel as though the wands are about spirit. For me, it's like what I call the Holy Spirit, which is, which is this, it moves through you. It's, it's holy. It moves through us. It's inspiration. It's it's the fire, the fire of spirit, and it's it's what moves us. The true intuitive feminine is moved. She experiences herself as being moved by an energy that is a force that is greater than her own sense of self. Beware of those that have an attachment to this identity or this ideology within yourself or in others. I think it's really, it's a really, really important message. Everybody is unique. Everybody has their own gifts and skills. And it's very important that you deduce what works for you. And you don't just take things on face value, especially here on the internet. It's extremely important and it's come to my attention. Okay, so. Health. Wealth. Love evolution oh now the ace is so, so funny so i was thinking don't change this around don't change it around just and i but it, obviously it wanted to so bottom of the deck is now ace of swords and i you know the energy's change quickly so it's about truth it's about the, your individual truth make sure you are operating in your you know, you will find your truth. I feel like it's saying, and then you will find your truth. And it's new, it's newness. I think this is going to be a new 
thing for lots of people to actually live in alignment with their sorry i'm trying to make this straight i think i mean this is straight sorry i haven't been well and it's all like it's like i can't see properly there we go so um i feel like that ace of swords is saying you will find your truth that way and it may be in you this is about a new idea, a new beginning, a new way of thinking. I think for many, we have to really release our ideas of of what we think is, is, is even spiritual or intuitive and all of that stuff because it's become completely saturated and there's such a spectrum of people. It's more important than ever that you are operating in your truth and allowing it always to be new. Your truth in the moment. That's where the victory lies. Ace of Swords is victory. It's victorious. And it's saying, and it's always new. It's like, who am I now? What am I thinking now? What do I believe now? It's not saying don't believe in things. It's saying don't attach. There's no attachment in the Ace of Swords because it's new. You can believe whatever you like. It's important that you allow life to direct you because you have some idea or belief it's it's swords of, of thinking um but but just let it be new that's where the presence comes in don't attach this is this isn't the way this is the way now in this moment for me it's very different and, and it doesn't require anybody else to follow follow in any any regard health the king of pentacles very interesting it's saying that it's important that we align our way of life, our way of being in the world with, with a healthy, with health. I was talking to somebody about shift work, overnight work, and how it was a very strong message and very powerful um, to, to not do that for a certain person. I just knew it was just, this is not good. This is just not healthy. That we have developed kind of the king of pentacles for me really represents like he's the king of the earthly of the earthly realm you know kind of thing of the, the of the pentacles and he's he's powerful he's successful he's powerful but it it's kind of saying that, okay you might seem powerful and successful and doing well on an everyday level in the world but is that taking a toll upon your health Sleep is, is very, very, very important sleeping pattern. Sleep is everything. If we And I really feel like we got our sleep completely off and then it's really impacted um, a lot of things. Um, it's interesting, somebody I really respect that has a bit of a following, he's a writer and a, he's a psychologist actually. He was talking about how if you're, if you're depressed, you need to kind of like get into the routine of life and don't follow your circadian rhythm. Because if you follow your circadian rhythm, you're likely to take yourself out of society and that's going to make you feel worse. And though I agree with that, I agree with that It's, it's if you're feeling disconnected. But essentially, I don't agree with the advice. I think it's correct. I think we can feel disconnected when we're not operating in the the way that society is, is, is set up. Um in terms of sleeping and even eating and all of these things. But I feel like the message here is that, um, I mean, it could be that for some people it could be, yes, you need to kind of get into more of a routine. You need to kind of become more part of society to, in order to be healthy. But for others, it could be, you need to relax that, relax those ideas and actually, um, rethink the structures around you because it could be making you unhealthy i feel like it's because you know i don't read reversals but i don't feel like i need to because if there's some because if it was in reverse it would be saying oh it's it's bad it's bad and if it's upright it's kind of good i mean loosely um so i can feel there's a bit of a flip on that for wealth ten of pentacles it's all good wow this is interesting it's it's all already here i feel like it's 75 25 or even 80 20 i feel like 80 percent of this card is saying you don't you, you don't need to work so hard you don't actually need to adhere um it, it because this is about it's already done it's here we you don't you know 
You don't need to work. There is also a connectedness, though, I feel. So this, this, this King of Pentacles does feel connected to this 10. It's all about abundance. It's a very, very abundant experience here. So this is great. I mean, this is wonderful. I do feel it's connected to this Ace of Swords, and I feel like it's connected to what I just said about that Queen of Wands. I feel like all this abundance comes out when we can connect to the world by being who we are truly. By finding our true self and communicating it, because the swords are also about communicating. So it's about communicating your truth in the moment and you will experience the world as abundant and you will experience yourself as powerful. And it's already done. Ten is about completion. It's about togetherness, community, connections, relationships. Completion, fulfillment, wholeness, and really the pinnacle, the pinnacle of the pentacles. Love the Hermit, really interesting. I feel like this is again connecting up to this message here. That there may be an experience of, of aloneness, like I was uh, talking about, um, over Christmas. Sometimes it can feel the holidays, whatever winter festival. It's not, I'm not trying to make any religious affiliations. Um, excuse me one second. <coughs> so, the the Hermit is about, for me, it really is about going within, but we go within to find our own truth. So in terms of love, it's very important that, that you seek what is already within you. I do feel as though it's also kind of saying that the light, if the light seems to be dimmed outside of you, it's almost like we, we are all a unique light. Our truth is what makes us shine, what makes us bright, our uniqueness, our unique truth in the world. Sometimes when we try and take that out, it can seem like it's dimmer because we're not sure. It's almost like we have to put it in this lantern in, all, in order to kind of make it real. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can't hold the light. It, it's like it needs a vehicle to, to, to come out into the world. And that might may feel like we need to dim it in order to take it out. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of a sadness to that. It's a bit like, well, I'm going to have to create some kind of vehicle for this light that might dim it rather than just kind of let it be free. Um, but I feel like it's necessary in terms of this achievement in the material world, as in it needs to become material in order for it to come out into the world. This feels like a very, very powerful message. I feel like it is about these relationships, unconditional love relationships, twin flame relationships. And it's this experience that we might have to make it smaller, not smaller, but we may have to kind of contain it a bit. It's almost like not make it fit but yeah it is it's about making it fit in the world but that's the way we take the light out we have to take the light the truth we must take the truth out into the world and we must make it physical we must give it a physical vehicle for it to live within and that may feel difficult part of that process might be about being alone or you know um Yeah, I think that's it. And for evolution, Seven of Swords. Kind of interesting. Seven of Swords for me can can symbolize trying to get away from something. I know that what this is, and I it's it's again connected to the beginning. I started to record, and I and um, I before I got the cards out, and I was talking, and it was just a bit. I was going on a bit too long, and. My voice isn't great at the moment. So I was trying to uh, kind of shorten it. And it became a bit ranty ranty. Sometimes I say, you know, I get a bit ranty ranty about things. But I think I'm learning to trust that those ranty ranty things, whether some people like them or not, are actually very important messages. Some people don't like the messages that come through me. They just want the messages in the cards. They don't understand that the cards are just kind of roads you know, of which the, the messages can, 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 can use. Um, and sometimes we don't need roads. Sometimes we can go off road. Um, 
but this was what I was kind of talking about, and I did mention it in, with that Queen of Wands. It's it's these ideas that we have about ourselves, and I really think it is to do with spirituality because evolution is about that for me, about our personal evolution, and personal and collective evolution. And it, it is almost like we're what we're trying to become. So this is is somebody trying to desert a war zone, but he's taking all the weapons with him. If we project all of like battling all the wrong things outside of ourselves and we don't see that we're carrying all these weapons and, and the weapons are these thoughts, these way of thinking, these beliefs, it's all about beliefs. And I think people within spirituality, they can look at religion and say, oh, religion's all this dogma and belief and it's all makes people believe. And again, people talk about spiritual bypassing. Spiritual bypassing is a real thing. I mean, I've seen it. I didn't, I have to be honest, until I moved to uh, a kind of place where spirituality was kind of the, on, on, on vogue, I didn't really see, I've seen from friends texts from his partner girl ex-girlfriend where she would tell him things like basically she split up with him and then said remember the four agreements don't take it personally it was just completely inappropriate to to say it's like it's it's when people use spiritual ideas and truths actually to to take them to basically it um dissolve any sense any presence of, of what's actually happening and so spiritual bypassing exists um but it, but that's kind of what it is it's never about taking it's every everything i do and share is about being more present um it's it, it's not about using ideas to be less present sometimes that can be difficult to discern and i do a lot of work with people to help them to discern when sometimes we do just have to move through love and it's not about allowing people to treat us badly it's about accountability so spirit, people use spiritual bypassing to to not be accountable um but what i feel like the message here is you know, sometimes the same truth can be used to make us more accountable. It's challenging. That's why I feel like people can get a bit lost. This is this this card is questioning you. What are you taking your beliefs with you? Do you have attachment to beliefs about peace? Even I feel like it's to do with peace because it's almost like this person wants to be peaceful, so they run away from the war zone, but they take these four swords with them five swords with them and it's a bit like well you, you've left two swords you've, you're taking all the weapons with you well, where's the war is it here or is it here and and i do i feel as though people take the fight with them because they want to fight people actually are not aware i think that what they want is peace but you cannot find peace outside of yourself. It's a bit like, well, if I run away from this not peaceful situation, then I'm going to experience peace. It doesn't work that way. Peace is within. When we are truly peaceful within, we do not seek the outside world to change in any way because it's pure acceptance. Just remember to experience truth as yours yours alone and transient and you can't really get into trouble with that then we don't need anybody to behave in a certain way there's a level of autonomy and there's a victory in that and i feel like this is the message you know, be the peace you want to see in the world be the love you want to see in the world. Be, be anything you want. If you want to experience something, become it. And you will. And we can be peaceful and accepting even in our 
toil and our turmoil and our suffering and our difficulty and our aloneness. You know? We can, we can just... Peace is really, truly acceptance of what is happening. And if we start judging outside of ourselves, the world outside of ourselves, it doesn't mean we can't observe things we don't like, either outside of ourselves or within us. It just means that we allow them to be part of our experience without fighting against things, because then we're creating the fight. So just be aware of those times that that might be happening within you. Okay, lots and lots of love. I am going to be doing, um, because of some requests, a yearly, a yearly reading this week over Zoom. Um, it's going to be on Saturday the 29th of december um time will be in your time zone click on the link so i'm going to do a big yearly reading it'll probably be a couple of hours long there'll be a huge amount of information in there it will be recorded you'll be able to watch it throughout the whole year it will have a uh i was going to say that, that it will it most probably will have a twin flame unconditional love relationship slant because that's my uh what moves through me a lot um but at the same time that really is also always about being who you are being you being in love being the love that you are these are usually really incredible if you've never been on one of my live sessions i would really invite you to come on this live session it's going to be incredibly useful it'll last for the whole year um, new information just flows and this retreat that I held a couple of weeks ago was really amazing it was just it's a great I just get out of the way I just turn up Noel Coward said about acting read the lines and don't trip over the furniture and that's basically what I try to do in the work here just read the cards and don't you know try and keep the technical things <laughs> working um so I, I really would love to invite you on that with me. Click the link and um, support me in, in, this, in this work. Um, if you should so wish, it would mean a great deal to me. So, um, yeah, that'll be happening on the 29th. Um, I'm going to have to stop talking because I haven't got much voice left. And... Uh, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for another year, another another year around the sun. It's been three years since, I mean, three years probably almost exactly since I uploaded my first video to YouTube. I think it's three years. I don't think it's four years. I think it's three years. And um, it might be four. Is it four? I think it might be four. Anyway, um, I, I, I adore this work and I adore you, even if you don't really uh, even like me, you know? <laughs> it's just the way life is. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You're, you're an exquisite being. And you are love and you mean so much to me and to the world who you truly are. And uh, I am 100% committed to who you are. I promise. So. Thank you. Loads of love. Have an incredible holidays. And I really hope to see you on the 29th. Let's get together face to face and see what messages come through for this year. I feel like it's going to be an exciting one. I really do. I really do. Loads of love. See you soon. And this week's masculine feminine reading is all about seeing 
what you are missing in terms of your beliefs that are creating a barrier between you and experiencing love. See you in a sec. And don't forget to book the yearly, if you are interested in the yearly face-to-face two-hour explanation of what's going on with the energies for the next coming year. It's usually a really great session and you can use it throughout the whole year. So it's good. So the link is in the description and I hope to have you there. Loads of love.